How's it going guys? It's Cole with See-Through Panel showing off the World of Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1. As always, I will not be spoiling anything with my words, but I will be flipping through the art. If you're worried about seeing something that may be construed as a spoiler, read the book first, come back, we can talk about it. And in case you're reading it in a paperback form or digitally, this is just the two mini-series, Sherlock, Frankenstein, and the Legion of Evil, and Doctor Andromeda and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows also known as Dr. Star in the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows. So it's just those two four-issue miniseries. It's eight issues in here, just put into one book. This was published by Dark Horse Retails for $50. And I would like to show off the nice... Hard to show off with the way my camera is set up, but nice sewn binding. They're not skimping on this. It would be... I don't even think you could pull off a, a book like this with a perfect binding. I'm sure it's obvious that it's sewn, but it is a nice quality book. It came with a dust jacket which is useless as most of them are. It is the same art, spine, and back. That is just... I don't get why they do this. I guess some people probably like it. It's just an extra thing. It doesn't hurt anything. I just don't... I just take them right off and forget about them. So let's get into this. This is all written by Jeff Lemire, of course. Uh, Sherlock Frankenstein is drawn, colored, and lettered by Rubin. And then Andromeda is art by Max Fiumara, colors by Dave Stewart, letters by Nate Picos. And for the first, you have such great chapter break art by Mignola, Dean Ormston, Duncan Figredo, even Jeff Lemire himself doing some art. It's a really, really nice book in terms of art. I would say the art on this is, oh, it's above and beyond a lot of the... Black Hammer Library Editions, which is saying something because the quality of artists that Jeff Lemire has gotten has been ridiculous. But having Rubin and Fiumara and all of these guest artists here is really nice. I'm, I think I'm a bigger Fiumara fan than most people, but for me, he is up there. I love his work on Abe Sapien, and I've yet to see him in a lot of other places. I would love to see him on some stuff soon. I hope I can find some. So starting with David Rubin here, the first story, Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil, is kind of a adventure through the world of Black Hammer, introducing you to heroes and villains and kind of getting steeped in the world and the history. It's a big tie-in to the main series. One of the main characters, I'll say, one of the main characters, yeah, um, of Black Hammer, his daughter is in this and is the main character of the miniseries. Trying to find the location of her father, pictured here, and kind of just, yeah, talking to a lot of the heroes and villains, a lot of them being washed up, older uh, characters, now that it, the times have changed. This is James Robinson, which if you know a lot about comics, that's a pretty good, pretty good, um, let's say cameo, uh, parody, I'm not sure, but... It works well. I'm flipping through this really fast because I want to get to the final page to make a point really quick. Um, this is the final issue. I'm bumping the camera. This is the final issue that David Rubin does traditionally on physical media. And then after that, he goes to fully digital. And I'll, I'll put these up to show you. That's a really cool Mignola chapter break art I was talking about. So he says he hopes you can't notice in the back matter of this book that he goes from traditional here. I'll just show you the last panel of the last page. It's all traditional media, is what he says. And then we're going to completely digital here. And I can't tell. I don't know if you can tell. If you can tell, you have a better eye than I do. And there is, there's some tells, I think. But I think that could be... Uh, also, just the scene being entirely different, so I should probably find a better scene. I'm not going to. This scene is much different than the scene on the next page. And all the dark and scratchy stuff and the shadows and all that might just be because of the scene. It might not be because it's traditional media and he's got an actual pencil on this. I don't think so. I, I, it's hard for me to tell, but it's really cool to know that after this, I'm pretty sure just on the whole, Rubin moved to digital. So it's kind of cool to know that this is his final uh, effort of traditional media. But I'm not going to get too much into the story. This is kind of just a fun 
carefree, mostly um, journey through the world. And I really enjoyed it. The colors that David Rubin employs is really, really good. I love his sense of color. I always have. I like the way he uses digital kind of glow effects, which can be done so poorly and have been done so poorly. Like this over here, kind of like the, the light effect. This effect here. That was done so poorly in the early to mid 2000s by um, digital colorists that were just getting used to using the tools and stuff. Even some glow on these. He, is, he uses a lot of glow now that I'm actually thinking about it, but um, I like the way he does that. He makes it work really well, whereas some people would completely just, it would fail for me. And I also love that he does some really challenging panel layouts. So I, I'm not going to zoom in too much here because you have to get the whole scope of stuff. We're entering the panel here. Characters are moving around and through here. And this is the only part that was challenging for me and I read it wrong. And I think now that I'm looking at it again, I have a better sense of what he's trying to do. So you're actually supposed to go from here, not read these balloons here, and go down through and into these balloons. I think that's why he's ending this gutter here, here. So you gotta go through it. I don't know if that's actually what he's trying to do, but these word balloons happen after this. So that was the only time I think ever that a David Rubin crazy layout has ever failed for me. I, d I, didn't, I didn't read it correctly. I went from here to here to here, and that just didn't make sense. But if you actually, I guess this gutter ending at the staircase should drive your eye to here, I think. I mean, that's just my take on it, but it was cool to work through it and figure out what he was going for. Even if it didn't work for me on the first try, I applaud the effort. Going straight into a beautiful spread of this really well-designed villain here, giant villain. More glow effects on the white. Some spatter. The scale of him is hard to grasp when you're zoomed in like that. And he actually does the designs for a lot of the Black Hammer um, heroes and villains. And that even for the second story, he is designing a lot of the characters that are used in the second story that are drawn by Fiumara. So that's really cool. And the back matter shows you a lot of... Like, here's a rough... Going into some penciling. I think this looks like traditional pencil, so maybe he still does roughs and um, drafts on pencil. Because you can see, like, smudge graphite and stuff like that. No spatter that I was talking about yet. So he adds that in for the finishes. But I really like that type of stuff. In like library editions and big collections, you get that nice back matter that really is cool to go back and look at some stuff. I love the way he employs lettering. Because he's doing this all himself, you have to remember. So he's putting letters over his own art. So he would never obstruct something he thought was necessary, which is sometimes a problem. In some comics, letters can put word balloons over things that shouldn't be hidden. I'm lingering a bit long on this one, so I'll say just as a closing thought, oh, this is one of my favorite characters, though. I gotta show off this. Not really a spoiler, but this is Cthulhu. He's a guy named Lou, who was taken over by Cthulhu. And uh, he's awesome. He's the coolest character in the book. And the best design, I think. He's got like a taco or something right there. It's a sandwich. And then he's smoking a cigarette. His tentacles are getting him alcohol. It's really cool. I love Cthulhu. And I also love uh, Cthulhu's, his daughter. So that was great. I thought that was cute. From Jeff Lemire. Let's get through. Okay. Uh, as a just closing thoughts on that. Really, really big fan of the series. I thought it was awesome, but going into the second one, it blew me away, whereas this was just a kind of fun romp through the world of Black Hammer. This here is a very serious, heartfelt, personal story, um, and I, I, it really changed my view on the Black Hammer world. 
because I had forgotten it's a very serious book. The original, the original um, series was very serious. This just was like happy-go-lucky fun. So I was surprised to get into this. And just, this pulled me in so much more than the first. I won't say it's better, but the first story I read like an issue a day for four days, finished it, went to the, read the first issue of this and just devoured the whole thing. It's just so, so well done. And Fumar's art is much different than Rubin's, you can tell. A lot of washes going on. A lot more ink. You're not really getting any ink, or like digital ink, I guess, uh, for Rubin, but just in terms of blacks, are we really getting, getting some spotted blacks here? But not a ton. Just very hyper detailed. Or Fiumar can get a little bit more impressionistic, but also kind of has a down to earth style that I really like. Dave Stewart coloring him does not hurt. Dave Stewart is the best colorist in the industry. I can say that pretty confidently. Um, he might not be everyone's favorite, but he is prolific and has just uh, just accolades on top of accolades. You can't really argue that he's uh, one of the best colorists to, to ever exist. But this story, without getting into spoilers, is about a hero who is kind of distanced. He's retired, but he has distanced himself from his family and he's trying to reconnect in a pretty um, pretty dramatic way. It's a tale that goes through time from him as a young man to him as an older man. And it is really cool. It has kind of connections to like a doctor um, or an Adam Strange type figure or maybe a Green Lantern, a cosmic superhero. Uh, kind of a mixture of both of those. And there actually is some and this is James Robinson also, by the way. This is that same character. So very big Starman um, vibes from this. But that's also why they had to change it from Dr. Star to Dr. Andromeda. And here they changed his staff from a staff to a gauntlet just to get that extra distance. To get that extra distance of, uh, of the character. Like here, I'm pretty sure that's easy to tell. That might have been a... That was probably a staff originally. The redraws are really well done. <clears throat> really well done. And, uh, let's see if I can, wow, I forgot about this page. I'm not sure if this, see, how can this be a redraw? I'm not sure, maybe he was using a gauntlet in the beginning of the thing and later turned it into a staff. If that's a redraw, that's so well done. That's so well done. I'll skip forward a bit, though. See, this kind of hard to tell but this signia here was was apparently a star in the original issues and this would be him holding a staff uh so little minor changes it doesn't really affect the story in any meaningful way um but fiumara just kills it on this and this story is like i won't even lie i was tearing up at the very end of it it's a very emotional very raw story and i wouldn't want to spoil anything so i'm not going to flip to the the ending of this at all there's wingman we saw, let me see if I can get a couple different versions of Wingman here. So, there's Wingman from Rubin. Rubin does Wingman there. Probably does it a page earlier. And then Fiumara, much different, much different style. So many washes, like very painterly looking. I'm sure that's Fiumara and Stewart combined there doing a bit of, probably mostly Fiumara I would imagine. But yeah, this is um, a really, really intense story. It was absolutely beautiful. Some of the best writing from Jeff Lemire that I've come across and that's saying something because he's pretty prolific and pretty well regarded as a writer. He's awesome. He does really, really uh, personal, emotional stories a lot of the time, and that is very much true in this case. Here we're getting into some of that Green Lantern stuff that I was talking about, which is obvious once you look at this page. Uh, the one thing they it, it gave me pause was this. They're like headquarters, they're in the shape of a star. And I was like, why is it in the shape of a star? It makes no sense. And then I realized uh, later that this used to be Dr. Star, and they, you know, 
it all kind of these are all stars on their chests and stuff instead of little molecule looking symbols but give you a nice close-up for a lot of cool designs here very green lantern though very green lantern and i love that one of my favorite properties from dc but yeah i'm just gonna flip to some back matter now because i think we're done here on the whole though i would say i definitely like um dr andromeda the most i love 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 the rubin miniseries but i think jeff lemire was kind of just having fun and revisiting some black hammer stuff but in Andromeda, he just kicks it up a notch and really shows off what he's capable of. And so does Fumaro, just kills it. And I don't get it, I don't really get enough Max, or I believe his brother Sebastian, who has a similar style. I don't get enough of them, so it was really nice to see them. And putting them with Rubin in one book is just insane. It's such a good combination. Here's some of these things that do, Rubin designs. A lot of characters here. Here's my boy, Cthulhu. You know, much more sinister, <laughs> Cthulhu there. Some of the rough layouts. I'll kick it back to Sebastian, or Max Fumar. Now I'm getting it mixed up with his brother. Kick it back to Fumara here. His version of Dr. Andromeda and then I'll show off Andromeda at the beginning with Rubin just to show you the differences there is Dr. Andromeda a little bit younger but nonetheless a completely different style of, of, of character but yeah there's you can't really can't go wrong with Black Hammer uh, if you're gonna check this out and you actually haven't read the main series just read the first two library editions of Black Hammer and then jump into this, it's definitely going to enrich the experience for you. This is just something a little extra to go on top of that series, and uh, it really works on its own as well. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You'll understand everything that goes on here, but the little extra background and knowledge of the history really makes it fun. But also I could see it being even more fun to kind of come in and just enjoy these series and then move into the main series. It could really go either way. Um, either way, I think we can all agree that this is not necessary. I don't know why I'm stuck on this, but anyway. Uh, if you guys have read this, let me know what you think. I'm going to be going through 2 through 4 of this series. I'm not sure if I'll do videos on them, but uh, I've got a couple other things on my list to, to do videos on. But uh, I really, really enjoy Black Hammer. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's going to be a lot of fun seeing a bunch of different artists and even different writers going through a bunch of mini-series, 4 to 6 issue mini-series. So... I'm really excited to see that. I'll probably show them off a little bit, maybe do them all in one video or something, but uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Peace.